I can really not see it going below 30,000. Yeah, that's kind of what I think, but at a high level, I'm not doing the analysis like you are, but it seems like there's a strong support there. Where do you think the bottom might be in this? Because I think it's probably what we saw last year. If it doesn't go much further, it seems like 30,000 is a pretty strong uh, support level at this point. What, what do you think? could be a bottom for the yeah for, yeah it's, it's very it has nothing to do again with the stock to flow uh, model of course no. just my personal opinion it's more like uh, ta almost yeah yeah almost ta and of course i did try to do that with the floor model which uh, epically failed uh, in november and december so i throw that away um but uh yeah I, I, one thing i look at for bottoms is 200 um uh, week moving averages and i, th- I think that's at, at around 20 19 thousand at the moment so bitcoin has never gone uh, a monthly close has, has never never had a monthly close below the 200 week moving average so that can be seen as a as a as a bottom but it's interesting so my buddy might be onto something with his 20 number <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 but it's very very low right so it, I, that's like a short moment and it's gonna bounce yeah, yeah exactly yeah, that would be a perfect moment to buy uh, mm-hmm. but then there's the uh, realized cap the realized price uh from you can you can do a 200 week Moving average or or um, or another in, a time interval, but but then not equally weighted, but weighted with uh, how much bitcoins were bought in that month or or period, and then weight that against the price. So you can weigh the price based on how much bitcoins were traded at that price, mm-hmm. and then you get a, a realized cap, uh, a realized uh, price, and that is much higher than the two hundred week. Uh, moving uh, moving average and uh, so that's a much what is that currently it is twenty four thousand, i guess okay. and depends on you uh, twenty four thousand based on the price every bitcoin every single bitcoin of the 18.9 bitcoins out there when they last transacted but if you make that into that that number is is heavily skewed by the lost bitcoins and the satoshi the first million satoshi coins so if you narrow the window down to say also 200 uh, weeks or less, that number goes up significantly to in the 30, 40,000 range, depending on mm-hmm. window. Really not see it going below 30,000. So, what so look, year in review 2021, um, what surprised you the most? And um, what do you think the biggest catalyst? Well, there was a bunch, but what was the biggest catalyst for us not getting to 100,000 plus? Like, what, what do you think happened last year? Yeah, I, I guess the main event was uh, China ban of mm-hmm. uh, mining. It, it uh, yeah, scared all the uh, miners out of China. China has always been a, a very had a dominant position in Bitcoin because um, because of the mining, because half of the Bitcoin mining was there. It was always perceived as a as a as a risk, as a threat. Yeah. So now they banned it. One percent attack. Yeah. Yeah. So the actual threat and and fear became reality. And and yes, the hash rate went down fifty percent, and then it went up to. <laughs> It started to move up two year, two months later uh, t- to the uh, new all time high right now, and all the miners had moved their coins uh, or their their miners to Kazakhstan and the, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the neighbor countries. Having issues right China. now too, actually, right with the power. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, big issues, big issues. But but most of the miners also um, went to the United States, of course, Texas and the uh, flare gas and etc. Because uh, Kazakhstan, the, the the turbulence we see there right now is not impacting the uh, hash rate too much. So, uh, but that was, that was a big thing. And, and together with it, the, the price went down was because all the miners, of course, uh, uh, gone and the hash rate gone, created a risk. Will it come back? Will China take over the, the hardware and, uh, and 51% uh, attack the network or something? And, uh, and the miners, of course, had to relocate the hardware and that costs money. So they had to sell all the Bitcoins, um, uh, they had, or some, some had to do that large selling and, and, so that was a major surprise because that that came for me at a at a bad moment because that was a spe- <laughs> uh, that was exactly the moment that uh, Bitcoin uh, was rising mm-hmm. and rising to the stock to flow uh, levels of hundred thousand and then all of a sudden bang we're back at uh, at where are we now well well forty something and um, yeah so so that w- that was the biggest surprise uh, to me do you be- do you believe in the Bitcoin lengthening cycle theory Yeah I talk with uh, Ben Cohen about that uh, in, in very much detail, like definitions of what that is. So so he's very much into that lengthening cycle and diminishing returns, I think. Uh, I always thought that is like the time model, the logarithmic model, that, that nice curve that, that's also sometimes used as the demand 
part versus the stock to flow as a supply part. Uh, but it's much lower than than. But what he what I learned from that interview was that lengthening cycles and diminishing returns. You look you look at the top. The, the, the market tops, you look only at the market tops where I look at averages, right? I, I look mm-hmm. at the regression line, the averages. So so he looks at market tops. So, and yeah, so um, lengthening cycles mean means that the top is later uh, uh, every cycle. Uh, mm-hmm. And right now, it, it seems like if this was the top, the 69, it was at the same location as uh, 2017. So it's not really lengthening. If it, if it if the top will, is not in and will be here in this year, for example, uh, in the summer, then we have, according to that definition, lengthening cycles. Yeah. And and diminishing returns, same thing. So the tops tend to, if relatively, tend to be relatively lower each cycle. So so 2017 was lower, mm-hmm. had a lower top than 2013, and now if. 69 was the top we had a lower top uh this time around of course if we go higher this is my theory of contracting the kager yeah 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 but I, but but i do not well i should say that different i'm not that much interested in the tops and the bottoms because those are one day events i can't buy or sell large large positions uh in a day so so i'm i'm much more focused on the average plateau where we uh, like the 50,000 of last year uh, you could have bought and sold sell, sold uh, a lot of money on, on on those levels so uh yeah where the exact top is and where the exact bottom is actually i i don't really care yeah. and um but i should say the general thought that the lengthening cycle guys and diminishing return guys have is that the volatility, uh, as the market grows, the market cap grows, the volatility goes down. I don't think that necessarily is the case uh, with Bitcoin. Why do you think that? Yeah, explain. Yeah, because uh, like I said before, uh, I think volatility is suppressed in most markets by the quantitative easing, by the central banks, by... Okay, and this is outside money. Yeah, and, and defaults are not permitted. So a, mm-hmm. a company can will be saved by uh, mm-hmm. by a QE money and, and not not letting uh, not being allowed to, to default. So so where does the volatility, volatility go? And Bitcoin is, is one of the last places on earth where volatility can, yeah, can, can exist. And I think it... If you look at option markets, they for sure do not foresee lower volatility... Uh, uh, in the next 12 months so mm. uh i guess the market will be, the, the bitcoin price will behave the distribution of bitcoin prices will be non-normal power law distribution uh, like with large uh, volatility and 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 actually without a clear standard deviation or variance uh so so that yeah that's a special part of of math or statistics if you will with which also uh, ties nicely into the exponential growth uh, theories that that it's a non-normal distributed returns market and 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 volatility plays a a really large role and it yeah i guess the volatility will will stay and um it, it and but, but but maybe i'm wrong so it's it's very interesting and and important to keep watching the implied volatilities uh, from the option markets because that's where volatility is traded directly and those markets do not indicate any decrease of volatility in the next uh, 12 months. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. 
There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges. But, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.